Dear Senator Elizabeth Warren and members of Congress, I'm filming this video to express my gratitude for your steadfast dedication to public service as U.S. Senators and Representatives. Your journey has been undoubtedly filled with sacrifices, and I recognize that a career in government can often be a thankless job. Your unwavering commitment to protecting the environment, safeguarding consumers, and ensuring financial stability has not gone unnoticed. So I want to start off by saying thank you sincerely. I'm also filming this video to explore three actions Congress should consider taking in order to achieve your goals and commitments while preventing history from repeating itself. American colonists who were subjects of the British Crown found themselves increasingly dissatisfied with their lack of representation in the English political system. Grievances, along with influence of Enlightenment ideas about self-governance and natural rights, culminated the American Revolution. The founding of the United States was carried out in order to form a new nation that fully embodies the principles of the Magna Carta, that being limited government, decentralization of power, rule of law, and protection of individual rights. The Magna Carta played a significant role in English politics as well throughout history. However, as power dynamics between the monarchy, nobility, and the general population shifted over time, infringing and violating people's rights to life, liberty, and property, a new nation was born, ours. History is on track to repeat itself because it's certainly rhyming right now. A shift in power dynamics has been happening here over the years, from the people and our rights to life, liberty, and property, to the politicians, the bureaucrats, the big bankers, and the big businesses. To bring balance back between all United States citizens, regardless of their relationship to government, big banks, and big businesses, and to maintain our status as a global financial and technological leader, and maintain our U.S. dollar as the world's reserve currency, I propose Congress consider taking these three actions. One. Dismantle the Federal Reserve. Replacing Jerome Powell as you've been an advocate for will not solve the fundamental problem. The Federal Reserve's creation in 1913 was, as you may know, a product of a secret meeting between six of that era's most powerful and influential bankers and politicians. The meeting was kept secret because the big Wall Street bankers and their allied politicians understood that it would be difficult to get the American public on board with such a powerful and dangerous tool. So what was also secretly discussed in the meeting was a propaganda campaign to sell the public and elected officials on the plan to institute a central bank by any means necessary. An entity wrought out of secrecy with a mission to shift power away from people towards Wall Street and their allied politicians that was ultimately accomplished through subversive propaganda should not have been created in the first place. Regardless, it has become the most powerful central bank in the world and has maintained that status now for over a century. Despite its means of origination and longevity throughout history, Due to recent events, it is worth considering whether the Federal Reserve truly serves and protects the consumers you are working hard to safeguard. Because a central bank, in a nutshell, is an institution that can generate perpetual profits and never sustain any losses. It creates money whenever it wants and unfairly distributes it to bankers, big businesses, and allied politicians. And when they receive new money that enters the economy first before everyone else, it grants them massive financial advantages over the American people, like arbitrage opportunities to buy assets before prices rise. This creates asset bubbles and does not drive innovation or help the economy grow. By the time money trickles down to consumers, assets are more expensive, and this unequal distribution of U.S. dollars is a key driver of injustices in our modern society. Another key driver of injustices in the United States is the central bank's ability to increase the monetary supply, which infringes on and violates the property rights of consumers via inflation, which causes the value of the U.S. dollar to dilute and become worth less over time. And the U.S. dollar losing value over time incentivizes consumers to think and act in the short term rather than the long term. Since the inception of the Federal Reserve, obesity rates, drug addiction, suicide rates, and indebtedness have all spiked across the United States among consumers. The existence of the Federal Reserve as a lender of last resort incentivizes banks to take on more unnecessary risk, putting profits over consumers, because as we've seen with the recent bank failures, the Fed will backstop the collapse while the bankers give themselves bonuses and dump shares ahead of time. The Federal Reserve's decision to increase interest rates at frequencies the market hasn't experienced in several decades is putting the U.S. dollar's status as the world's reserve currency in jeopardy. It's causing more banks to collapse, creating panic among consumers, and as a result, destroying small and mid-sized regional banks. The Federal Reserve's actions will lead to big banks absorbing all of the small ones, which will further consolidate and centralize the U.S. financial system to the detriment of U.S. citizens. The survival of small and medium-sized local and regional banks is crucial for our country and consumers because they offer U.S. citizens around the nation several benefits over big central banks, like 
lower fees that help consumers save money over time, personalized services that help consumers find the best solutions for their financial needs, flexible loan decision-making processes that help consumers get access to capital they otherwise wouldn't qualify for with bigger banks, quicker loan application processing, more competitive interest rates, less bureaucracy, better understanding of consumers' local markets, and better support for local economies. Smaller local banks actually help the economy at large grow by giving small local businesses capital in a way that does not create inflation. Because types of loans to local businesses create jobs, foster innovation, as technology gets better, things become cheaper over time and generally gives all of us everything we want for society without all the negatives. When smaller local banks provide credit to citizens and businesses for productive purposes, like business investments, implementation of new technologies, expanding businesses, hiring new employees, and overall increases in productivity, it stimulates healthy growth of the local economies, and when this happens across the country, it simulates healthy growth in the entire U.S. economy, creating a more capitalistic economy overall. When a country has one central bank and maybe a few big banks, it makes it difficult for the country and its citizens to thrive and flourish because a vast majority of people and businesses have significantly less access to capital, which has extremely negative effects on the economy and GDP. And lack of local knowledge about a community, coupled with higher rates, generalized versus personalized services, rigid loan decision-making standards, lengthy loan application processes and more bureaucracy, and virtually no incentive to support individuals and their local economies, would further infringe on and violate the lives, liberties, and property of Americans. We must remember the principles upon which our country was founded, as well as the ideals enshrined in the Magna Carta, which emphasize the importance of decentralization. A central bank digital currency, or CBDC, issued by the Federal Reserve would represent a significant step towards further centralization of the U.S. banking system. By creating a digital currency under the control of the central bank, the Federal Reserve would gain even more power over monetary policy, financial transactions, and the broader economy. Historically, the Federal Reserve has faced criticism for its discretionary use of monetary policy tools, such as quantitative easing, low interest rates, and now unprecedented interest rate hikes, which have disproportionately benefited large financial institutions while contributing to inflation and economic inequality. With a CBDC in place, the potential for continued abuse of power could be amplified as the Federal Reserve gains more direct control over individual transactions and the flow of funds throughout the economy. This dangerous increase in power will come at the expense of traditional banks, credit unions, and other financial institutions exacerbating the centralization of the U.S. banking system and further concentrating power in the hands of a single entity. For all of these reasons, Congress should seriously consider exploring the idea of dismantling the Federal Reserve and promoting the proliferation of smaller banks across the nation to decentralize the U.S. banking system, which supports consumers, their local economies, and the entire United States economy at large. There are several alternative systems that could replace the Federal Reserve that would create a more transparent, decentralized, and democratic financial system that serves the interests of consumers over big banks and their political allies. This includes one, a network of smaller localized banks and credit unions, with each responsible for managing their region's monetary policy and financial stability. Two, establishments of public banks owned and operated by the government, states, and municipalities that provide alternatives to the private banking system, where community development and social welfare are prioritized over shareholder profits, ensuring financial resources are distributed more equitably. Three, Establishments of a clearinghouse system, which existed before the Federal Reserve to manage the exchange of checks and banknotes between banks. So a modernized version with appropriate technological advancements and regulations could help maintain financial stability without the need for a central authority. Four, a rules-based monetary policy system with predetermined rules for setting interest rates, controlling the money supply, and responding to economic conditions, which would reduce the potential for political interference and manipulation. And five, the use of decentralized digital currencies to help create a more transparent financial system to facilitate transactions and maintain financial stability. These ideas are not mutually exclusive and could be implemented in various combinations to replace the Federal Reserve and create a more equitable, inclusive, transparent, and decentralized financial system. The second action Congress should consider taking is dismantling corporate personhood. Corporate personhood is related to the 14th Amendment and its core principle that no person can be deprived of rights without due process of law. As you may know, the 14th Amendment was originally created to protect freed slaves after the Civil War. However, it ended up almost entirely applying to and benefiting big corporations to the detriment of consumers and the future of the United States at large. In the 1970s, corporations managed to have money legally determined as a form of speech. And under corporate personhood, 
Since corporations have the right to free speech, they are allowed to use money to protect their interest and influence public opinion, which has been used to challenge restrictions on advertising and lobbying. So corporations have the right to unlimited political spending, which means they can spend unlimited amounts of money to influence political outcomes. Personhood also allows corporations to assert rights to privacy, the right to sue, and the right to due process. Over time, corporations have managed to amass more rights than actual flesh and blood U.S. citizens. So they are afforded additional protections that do not apply to consumers, like limited liability protection, where the owners of corporations are not personally responsible for the debts or liabilities of the corporation, the ability to defer taxes and deduct business expenses, the right to protect their intellectual property, trade secrets, contractual obligations, brand image, and they have the ability to access larger pools of capital, which give them huge competitive advantages over individuals. Basically, corporate personhood created a society where corporations buy politicians to buy favorable legal and regulatory frameworks for themselves and buy consumers' attention to create a favorable society through media and advertising for generating profit. During the golden age of advertising in the 1960s, the U.S. saw a rise in mass media and consumer culture, with corporations using advertising to promote materialism and consumerism, where people are encouraged to prioritize buying and consuming goods over their own health and well-being. Ever since corporations were granted human rights and beyond, and used their rights and powers to fabricate a materialistic society based on consumption, the United States has been on the decline. By dismantling corporate personhood, Congress has the opportunity to restore greater accountability and fairness to our democracy. Removing the legal fiction of corporate personhood would help reduce the outsized influence corporations have over our political process, particularly regarding campaign financing and lobbying efforts. This would allow for a more level playing field in which the voices and concerns of everyday citizens can be better heard and represented. Moreover, by holding corporations more accountable for their actions, we can foster greater corporate responsibility towards the environment, consumers, and communities they serve. This change would encourage companies to prioritize long-term sustainability and social welfare over short-term profits and shareholder interests. And this is an area I believe your leadership and commitment to the well-being of U.S. citizens can make a significant difference in restoring balance of power and influence in our political and economic systems. The third action Congress should consider taking is converting the U.S. fiat currency back to an equity-based currency similar to when it was backed by gold. This approach could offer several potential benefits that may contribute to a more sustainable and resilient economy. Here are five benefits worth exploring. One, enhanced stability and value preservation. By backing the US dollar with a tangible asset like gold or a basket of commodities, its value would be less susceptible to inflation and fluctuations in the global financial markets. This could preserve the purchasing power of the dollar over time and provide a more stable store of value for savers and investors. Two, fiscal discipline and a reduced debt. A currency backed by a tangible asset would encourage fiscal discipline, as the government would be limited in its ability to create new money without a corresponding increase in the underlying assets. This constraint would help promote responsible government spending and potentially reduce the growth of national debt. Three, increased trust in the financial system. An equity-based currency could increase public trust in the financial system by providing a more transparent and tangible link between the value of the currency and its underlying assets. This would offer reassurance to individuals and businesses that the value of their money is not subject to arbitrary manipulation by central banks or government. Four, reduce dependence on foreign debt. By anchoring the value of US dollar to tangible assets, the country would be less reliant on foreign investors to finance its debt. This could reduce the risk of financial contagion and enhance the nation's financial sovereignty. And five, encouragement of long-term investing. An equity-based currency could encourage long-term investment by providing a more stable store of value. This would support sustainable economic growth by incentivizing businesses and individuals to invest in productive assets rather than engaging in short-term speculation. Acknowledging potential drawbacks like the risk of deflation, which is already a possible outcome for our current situation, reduced monetary flexibility, which we could argue too much flexibility got us into this current situation, and the need to manage the underlying assets effectively. Which is why it's worth exploring using Bitcoin, the only truly neutral, decentralized, transparent, immutable, global, inclusive financial infrastructure to ever exist in human history. As one of the commodities, ideally as part of a basket of diversified assets and commodities, to back the US dollar. Backing the US dollar with Bitcoin would reduce dependence on traditional commodities such as gold, which can be subject to geopolitical risks, environmental concerns, and supply constraints. 
Bitcoin's digital nature eliminates these concerns and offers a more efficient and easily manageable alternative. As other nations increasingly explore alternatives to the US dollar and the potential of digital currencies using blockchain technology, backing the US dollar with Bitcoin could help maintain the dollar's status as the world's reserve currency and the country's competitive edge in global finance. Bitcoin's decentralized nature ensures that no single entity or government can control or manipulate its supply. This characteristic could enhance the perceived stability and trustworthiness of the US dollar. Additionally, Bitcoin's underlying blockchain technology provides a secure and tamper-proof record of transactions, which could contribute to increased confidence in the financial system. Embracing Bitcoin as a backing commodity for the US dollar would signal the country's commitment to supporting and adopting cutting-edge technologies. This would position the United States as a leader in digital assets and blockchain innovation, attracting investment and talent from around the world. And I acknowledge and want to genuinely express my admiration for your skepticism and critiques of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Your concerns demonstrate a commitment to protecting the environment, consumers, and ensuring the stability of our financial system. While it's crucial to be cautious of the potential risks and challenges associated with new technologies, I think you would be pleasantly surprised how a deeper understanding of Bitcoin and its underlying technology may reveal significant benefits for the environment, consumers, and the United States at large. Because these technologies play a significant role in maintaining the United States' global financial and technological dominance, as well as preserving the US dollar's status as the world's reserve currency. Senator Warren and members of Congress, I sincerely appreciate your dedication to the betterment of our nation, and I implore you to consider the transformative potential of dismantling the Federal Reserve, dismantling corporate personhood, converting US fiat currency to equity-based currency, and considering decentralized cryptocurrencies like blockchain technology as one of the many diversified assets and commodities to back the US dollar to foster a more inclusive, equitable, and sustainable financial system. I acknowledge that each of these changes would be subject to significant debate and scrutiny as they involve fundamental shifts in the United States financial system and legal framework. Furthermore, the process would likely face considerable opposition from various stakeholders, including the Federal Reserve, big banks, big businesses, and even some government agencies. Nonetheless, Senator Warren, you and the rest of Congress have the authority to pursue these changes if you deem them to be in the best interests of the United States and its citizens you are committed to serving and protecting. Thank you for your time and attention. I hope you find the content of this video interesting and worth exploring in future efforts to champion responsible financial policy. Cordially, Crypto Casey.